All right, so we have Tom Breeze versus Antonio Ahoyo. All right, so Tom Breeze, uh, he comes in that southpaw stance. He likes to be in and out of range, looks to enter the opponent's range after they've completed their, you know, combination or their strike. And that's a tendency that you generally have when you do a lot of sparring. So, you know, a lot of his fights do end up looking like sparring matches. And he is, you know, he's got good footwork. He's proficient on the back foot as well, as well as being on the front foot. And for Ahoyo, he comes in with that karate style type of stance. His favorite strikes are the straight two, the front kick up the middle, and the high kick. And they're all open to him as a southpaw, but, you know, one thing he does do is he telegraphs pretty much every strike that he throws. You can tell when he's about to throw something. And for Tom Breeze, he has a nice stiff jab. He put out KB Buller with that, or put down KB Buller with that stiff jab. Step in rear uppercut telegraphed a little bit but you know not as much as a Hoyo does and he also has a nice body kick when he's versing orthodox opponents Tom Breeze will put together combinations but he only throws a limited number of combinations like he doesn't have the most diverse striking arsenal he's not going to throw all these different type of techniques at you and for Hoyo, you know Breeze does have a little bit of power so you want to get those hands up which is generally what he doesn't do how these guys win fights so Tom Breeze got a nice jab how these guys lose fights. Uh, so yeah, both have poor fight IQ. Tom Breeze, especially in the grappling, is where he displays his fight IQ and lack thereof. I think he engages in the grappling a little too much. I think he makes a lot of mistakes on the mat, and that generally tends to him getting finished or just getting dominated on the mat, really. Uh, for Ahoyo, he has poor cardio, and he has poor takedown defense. And for Tom Breeze, he struggles against heavy pressure fighters like Brennan Allen and Sean Strickland. Alright, uh, pass to victory for these two, so for Tom Breeze, body kick against that long torso of Ahoyo's, and also double up on the left hand, because when he backs up, he reaches out with his lead hand, so, and doesn't generally look to counter that often if you're backing him up, so, yeah, look to really punish him if he's going to be extending that lead hand, but also, yeah, look to really put the pressure on as he's going backwards. For Ahoyo, look to take the front foot, look to pressure him against the cage, I know it's not something Ahoyo generally does, but... Yeah, look to get him behind the two octagon lines, pressure him, keep him behind there. Uh, look for the inside leg kick as well, outside leg kick, if you switch southpaw, because he doesn't really check them, and you have been known to fight in both stances, so really try to attack that lead leg from any angle possible. And look to mix in takedowns. I know on tape his takedowns don't look great, but, you know, look to mix them in anyway. Uh, look to try and get Breeze onto the mat, try and sit in half guard, get some top control, you know, hopefully Breeze makes a mistake on the mat. That's what you're looking for here. Alright, so how I see the fight playing out. Both these guys are fast starters, but I believe only Tom Breeze will be able to keep the pace up. You know, Ahoyo hasn't shown the best cardio in the UFC, and in my opinion, I just don't think he's UFC level, and he's probably on his way out of the company if he loses here. Also, Ahoyo isn't generally the type of fighter that Breeze has struggled with in the past, like that heavy pressure style that guy's going to try and get you on the mat and make Breeze make a mistake. You know, Ahoyo, he telegraphs all of his strikes, so a guy like Breeze, I think he's going to be seeing everything coming, and I think he's much quicker than Ahoyo, he's sharper with his hands, he has much better strike and defense than Ahoyo. I think Ahoyo is just a little a little bit too basic uh, of a striker to, to match Tom Breeze in the stand-up. And really, the only way I see Breeze losing this one is if, if he just like randomly decides to throw zero offense and loses a low-volume decision. Or like flakes again after being hit or being taken down to the mat. But I do think he'll actually look really good here. And I'll definitely overrate him for his fight after this. So yeah, that's the kind of cycle with Tom Breeze. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he'll probably look really good here and take very little damage against Ahoyo. And I think, yeah, he's going to look good. Uh, there's no way I'm betting the money line for Tom Breeze though. I think, uh, you know, he's just has such a propensity to flake that I don't really want to take that much juice on him. Alright, so the prediction is Tom Breeze. I think he wins by decision. I think Ahoyo just kind of takes the damage. It's a bit of a lackluster fight, maybe. Uh, so yeah, I do favor him the win around 75% of the time. You know, skill for skill, you know, the 35, uh, the 25 percent is basically just accounting for when Tom Breeze doesn't show up or if he flakes or whatever. So yeah, I'm not really interested in the money line because it, he's hard to trust at juiced odds. If it keeps going up, then maybe I'll have a look, but yeah, not at the moment. 
Tom Breeze by decision is what I'm looking at. Maybe if that's like plus 200 or three dollars, then I'd probably bet that. I think Ahoyo's semi durable, and I think he he'll probably look to basically just survive instead of going out in his shield. So yeah, that's probably one bet I was looking at. But yeah, not really looking to bet this fight. 